Hey Power Appers, my name is Robin and today I'm trying to help you make your apps a little bit more beautiful. In the background, you can see the component library and template that Louise and me created for you to use. And until modern controls are fully there, probably takes a few more months, this will be the template that I start every new Power Apps Canvas app from. It is absolutely free to use and in the description you find the link to the GitHub repository to download this. There's also documentation to get started. But today I want to talk about some techniques I used in that uh, template and component library um, which makes it a lot easier to work with SVG icons. Because um, as you can see right now, when I click on different color schemes in here, the SVG icons I used here also change the color um, without you having to do anything. And it probably works a little bit different than you might expect because we try to keep it as simple as possible for you to use these SVG icons. For example, um, you see the GitHub logo up here. This is this icon and there is no color property anywhere in that code. But still, if we change those here, um, yeah, it changes its colors. And I want to show you how the normal method to uh, use color in your icons and SVGs works and how the method works that we used in here. First of all, we need icons. And the icons uh, that are in here, you can find on a, a website called pictogrammers.com. Link is in the description as well. There are all the material design icons in there, plus uh, many, many more that were created by users. But this technique works with yeah, every SVG icon you can think of. So you can use the Fluent icons, you can use Font Awesome icons, and so on and so on. So we're going to look for an icon. So let's use this cool icon with the cowboy hat here. And we can download the SVG code here. And then we need an editor. So we don't need that. We will, uh, so this is the code of our SVG icon. And if we want to bring that to Power Apps, we need to exchange all the double quotes for single quotes. So this is what I did here with control H and then just replace it. And I'm gonna copy that code. And you probably know the technique to bring SVG icons into your, um, yeah, into image controls. So let's uh, look for an image control. And then we need some uh, wrapper code so that we can just paste the SVG code in here. And I have that in my clipboard at all times. You see it's pinned to my clipboard. So um, if you use that code regularly, I highly recommend doing that. Louise told me that you can do that. So, um, and I've used it many, many times. So uh, SVG code goes in here. And the wrapper code that we need is just this here. And then don't forget and uh, this at the end. And then we can just paste our SVG code in double quotes. So just as a string in here. And quickly the reason why we needed to repl replace all the double quotes for single quotes is because when it were double quotes, then yeah, the text would stop. And uh, yeah, it uh, for the code, it doesn't matter if it's double or single quote. So that's a quick way to do it. And then we have our cool, yeah, cowboy guy in here. So now we want the color to match our color scheme. And the thing that we can do um, is we say fill equals, and then we can use a color in here. And what we want to do is we use the variable where the color is stored. So uh, it's stored in defaults dot primary color hex. And as you can see, we need the color as hex code. So we don't need a 
normal power apps color, but we need the color in hex code and we calculate that color in our on start property. So let's take a quick look in here. So first of all, we're gonna set the color uh, in here and this another cool trick uh, that you can use. I actually got it from Louise. She has a great blog post about that. I'm gonna link it in the description. Um, so we just define the color once and then we calculate the hex value of the color with this formula in here. And then we got this, uh, this defaults.primary color hex variable. So, and now we match the color scheme in our app. So, but let's take a quick look here. Um, here we don't need that. So we're gonna just bring our cool cowboy guy up here. So now it automatically matches the color of our scheme. How does that work? Here I didn't do this little trick with fill. I did something else. And let's look at the second method. And this is especially helpful when we want to store our icons in just one place, for example, in a named formula in our app or on the on start property or somewhere. I'm gonna show you the named formulas. Oh, I have actually icons in here. So I'm gonna use a third icon, call it a uh, named formula cowboy icon. And then we're gonna paste the code in here. And don't forget this at the end, otherwise it doesn't work. And so we can now use this NF cowboy icon instead of this code here. And still have our cowboy, but now it's back to black. So um, how does that work now? We can just use, or I, I show you, let's take a quick look what we're going to do here. So I want to replace that SVG string with this string right here. I'm gonna copy it really quickly. And that's really simple because this SVG is, um, yeah, it's only once in here. So we just use the substitute function to substitute this uh, this string with this whole string and then set the fill property for every, uh, for every element in this SVG um, at the beginning. And let me quickly show what I mean. So we say substitute and then SVG. And uh, no, our icon, and then SVG, and we're gonna substitute it with the thing I just copied. And this should be it. I somewhere made a small error in here. Oh, yeah. It's not substitute, it's of course substitute. Uh, and now we get to the same result and now we can really quickly exchange the icons. So if I don't want the cowboy icon, but the other ones that I stored, for example, the cash icon or the bug icon. Yeah, then we can really quickly exchange our icons. It's much easier this way to store icons and variables. I hope you liked that little trick. And if you didn't know our template and component library, please, please give them a try and let me know what you think of it. See you next time.